and a lot of anticipation ahead of what Treasury Secretary Geithner will be announcing in regard to uh, the latest strategy uh, to bail out the banks. And uh, to comment on global strategy, in light of a lot of this news today, we're joined by Justin Stewart, partner and strategist at Seven Investment Management, and Aaron Smith. He's managing director at Superfund Financial. Good morning to you both, gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, Justin, I, I do want to ask you, going into today's session, uh, there's a lot of anticipation of what this public-private partnership is going to look like to finally get uh, some of those distressed assets off of banks' balance sheets. Is this the dose of medicine that we've been waiting for? Well, it sounds good in theory at the moment. Like all these things, the devil is in the detail. We've seen initiatives like this uh, back here in the United Kingdom. We've seen them elsewhere in the world as well. And it depends how you're going to structure it. First of all, look at what you're trying to achieve. And the, what you've got to achieve is to get the banks lending again. Every day that banks don't lend, that will affect every single corporation with its cash flow. And of course, every single citizen try to actually manage their own finances and certainly try and get a loan or a mortgage. So the question is, therefore, how do you get the banks lending? By taking the bad stuff off is one issue, yes, and that can be, be probably achieved. It depends how they're going to be able to do it, if you're going to get some of the Wall Street involved in enabling them to actually trade this uh, toxic debt. Um, but equally, of course, getting the banks to focus on good assets. At times like this, good banking re restructuring tends to be taking good assets and building a better bank on a smaller size and thus leaving the rest to run off. If you spend your entire time focusing on the bad stuff, that's, you just end up with more bad stuff. We've got to get the good banks working properly. So the key issue is there must be a balance here between making sure that you've actually got benefit in terms of who's taking the risk, how much is with government in terms of the downside, and then who, who's also getting the benefit of the upside. And what Tim Geithner must be doing, particularly given some of the political pressure on him at the moment, is to make sure that the benefit on the upside is shared with government as well so that the uh, so taxpayers see they're actually getting the, the, their side of any benefit that comes out of it. Well, Aaron, one of the potential uh, winners or potential uh, losers, depending on how this all pans out, is the private sector itself. A number of hedge funds and private equity firms potentially becoming partners in essentially bailing out the global economy by purchasing some of these assets. How long before there's, there's opportunity there, and what's uh, the response, do you believe, in, in terms of the private sector partners who may be taking uh, on some of these bad assets onto their own balance sheets? Oh, there, uh, Margaret, I think there's a lot of opportunity right now in the short term to make profits. Uh, the, the upswing that we see in equities could continue through the G20 summit as governments spend an unprecedented amount on bailouts and stimulus packages. I think you just have to take a step back and sort of look at the global macro picture. The, the United States government, through the Treasury and the Federal Reserve, has spent over $13 trillion in stimulus packages and bailout plans. The, the total value of the global of the U.S. equity markets is only $9.1 trillion. So there's so much money being thrown after the market. And the question that I have is, is whether the Geithner plan will really be effective. Uh, it, it really is sort of counterintuitive to me that on one hand the Treasury is issuing, you know, two and a half uh, trillion dollars worth of uh, new issues this year, according to Goldman Sachs. Where on the other hand, they're buying $300 billion worth of bonds. So. You know, it seems a little bit incongruous to me. I think it's short-term gain and long-term pain. We're going to see a little bit of a rally in the equity markets, but the long-term moving averages remain intact in a, in a very strong downward trend. And Justin, hi, it's Lisa over in Singapore. I'd like to get your thoughts on what Aaron was just saying. Does this make sense? I mean, why should we trust the people who got us in this position in the first place to get us out of it? And if the government is guaranteeing uh, these toxic assets anyway, why don't they take the approach that's worked in the past? Just go in, take over the banks, nationalize the ones that need to be nationalized, and fix them up. And when they're ready, put them back out there in the private sector. Why not? I have to say, Lisa, I would do, I completely agree with that. I suspect, though, a lot of it is also down to the attitude in America of the actual nationalization. The term itself smacks of certain areas of socialist attitudes and things like that, how deeply unpleasant. But, of course, actually, if you want to get a bank properly restructured at speed and have it operational, that's actually what you've got to do. And realistically, of course, these banks uh, are 
effectively um, you know, under government influence, so why not make it government control, particularly to get government policy put through? It's getting that policy out to get the lending started straight away. There are some interesting parallels to look at here we had in London. Years back, we had Lloyd's of London, the, uh, the, the insurance operation. That got into severe trouble 15 years ago. There, they focused on good assets and put the bad assets into a separate business called Equitas, which, after some years, has now successfully been trading through, and the value has actually been, uh, actually been taken out of that, um, out of that, uh, that body. So it worked very effectively indeed. But it meant, though, within two years, Lloyd's was actually able to operate very effectively. That's the model I would like to try and take, but I suspect that may be politically not very palatable in the States. Mm. Aaron, uh, jump in here and tell us what you think investors need to do in order to take advantage of this situation and this environment and try to recoup some of the losses that most investors have suffered. Well, it's actually a really great opportunity if you step back and see what the global macro trends could be in the market going forward. Uh, we expect this could be the very beginning of the end for the U.S. dollar. Uh, basically, if you look over the next two to three years, I'd expect a 